Hello GED students, it's GED question of the daytime and I'm still working with D tables and you might be wondering, my goodness, when's she going to end this? This is the last of my videos like this, but I just really want to make sure that you know it because this is one of those commonly missed GED problems. The GED uh, sent us adult education teachers a list of problems that students are missing a lot on their GED, and here's one. And even though it might look challenging, it's actually pretty simple. So let's take a look. Directions say, create a table of values and use it to graph the line y equals 3 halves x minus 1. So students freak out for a few reasons. One, graphing lines sounds hard. And two, they see the fraction and they shut down. So I just want to let you know that this way of graphing lines, although it takes a little bit of time, is actually pretty simple. Uh, it won't be challenging. Um, and the our TI30XS is going to handle the, calcul the calculations for us with fractions. So I am going to do this, this video using my calculator. Um, for those of you who know how to deal with fractions, you won't be too impressed. But for those of you who uh, fractions have been what are holding you back, if you had a fraction in this context on the GED, that is in graphing lines, you'd get a calculator. So let's go ahead. Okay, so first thing, it says create a table of values. Now they started this table for me. Notice a couple of things about the table. There's an X column and there's a Y column. When you look at a line, all a line is, is a bunch of points uh, that are all in a row, point, 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 all in a row. And each one of those points has an X value and a Y value. So what we'll do, and this is what always freaks students out, is we are just gonna choose some X's. Now, students don't like this kind of freedom. They're like, what X's should I choose? And it doesn't really matter because I'm just going to find a couple of points on my line and then end up connecting them. I don't need to know all the points on my line. So really, literally, you could choose any X. Now, I'm going to be wise about my choice. You know, I'm multiplying by fractions. I'm multiplying this X. Take a look at this equation that I have this X in. Um, it ends up, this X is shoved up against this fraction 3 halves, meaning it's going to get multiplied by 3 halves. And I know something about multiplying fractions, and that's an idea of divisibility. I understand that when I'm taking halves of something, it would be easier to half something that was divisible by 2. Uh, for example, it's easier to like half the number 12 because it's divisible by 2. You can break it into two perfect halves, 6 and 6, than it is to... Uh, half the number 13, that's more challenging. I'm going to end up with pieces and parts of numbers, decimals and fractions. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a bunch of numbers that are divisible by 2. Why? Because of this bottom of my fraction is a 2. So I think I'll do negative 2, 0, and 2. Now, did I have to choose those numbers? No, I didn't. But I chose wisely so that my math would be easy. And now I'm going to go ahead and plug in. Let's plug in. So I'm starting with my equation, y equals 3 halves x minus 1. And when I say let's plug in, I'm talking about the algebraic principle of substitution, which says that anytime you have a known value or anytime two things are equivalent, you can substitute one for the other. So that's what I'm doing. And where I once saw x in my equation, I'm substituting in a negative 2. Notice that the negative 2 I substituted in was in parentheses because I know that when a number and a letter are shoved together, they are multiplying. And I'm going to put minus 1 here. Now, I am going to do this fraction in my calculator. To type 3 over 2 in your GED calculator, you're going to um, type the numerator 3. And then you'll type the N over D button. N over D is the fraction button. And then you're going to type 2. And so I'm going to type 3. No, oh, sorry. I already told you that. <clears throat> 3, then n over d, then 2. Then, um, just to be safe, because in some modes it matters and in others it doesn't, I'm going to arrow out to make sure I'm out of my fraction. And I'm going to open up a parentheses to say multiply by negative 2. Now, be careful. The negative button in your TI has a minus sign in front of it, so negative 2 close parentheses, um, and I'm going to do that calculation in my calculator, and I find out that I get negative 3. 
And by the way, if you knew how to do multiply fractions by hand, it'd be much easier than the calculator. But even if fractions panic you, you can do it in the calculator. Same thing with this little negative calculation. It really stresses students out, but I'm going to type negative 3. Now again, the negative is down at the bottom of the calculator in parentheses, and then put minus 1. When it, the minus sign is between two numbers, it's a mi regular minus 1. And I do get negative 4. So what did I just find out here? I found out that when I turned x into negative 2, my y became negative 4. And so I just got one of the points on my line, the point negative 2, negative 4. Negative 2, negative 4. OK, now we'll just keep going like that. We're going to keep substituting in these x values and see what happens to y when we do it. Okay, so I'm going to start again with my original equation. y is equal to 3 halves x minus 1. I'm going to substitute in my next x choice. My next x choice was a 0. Again, you could have chosen really any numbers you want, um, but just fair warning, if you go too big, you might go off the graph. And if you go too weird, you might have ugly math with fractions. Okay, so 3 halves times 0, well, anything times 0 is just 0. And if I take 1 away from 0, like I said I would do, I'm just going to get negative 1. And so when I plugged in a 0 for my x, I got a negative 1 for my y. Okay, that represents another point on your graph. 0 means do not move in the horizontal uh, direction. I'm not going to move left or right, but I do have a negative 1 for my y, which means I'll move vertical negative 1. If you're struggling with graphing points, I have lots and lots of videos on that. Uh, you should go back and check one out. Okay, and now let's do the last one. Let's find out when we take this original equation, y equals 3 halves x minus 1, and we plug in regular 2, what we get. So 3 halves, and I shouldn't say regular 2, that's positive 2, minus 1. And, oh my gosh, I really don't want to do this in a TI because this is so easy to do by hand. Uh, for those of you who know how to multiply fractions, the cross-canceling, it's going to be really easy to tell that this actually turns to 3. But if you don't believe me, um, again, we can take 3 n over d2, open up a parentheses, and uh, put 2 inside and close parentheses and press enter. And you do get 3 minus 1, and my y is equal to 2. Okay, and so now I got a third point on my graph, the point 2, 2, x value 2, y value 2, and so I'll go 2 in the x direction, which is horizontal, and 2 in the y direction, which is vertical, and I get to that point. And what I want you to notice here is that these three dots are in a line. That's a really good check for yourself. If you have like a bunch of dots that you found and they're all over the place, they're all crooked and cockeyed and they don't make a perfect line, something has gone wrong, okay? But you can see here that the dots that I found are in a perfect line. Of course they are. I told you this was the graph of a line. They should go nice and straight like that. And so I just connect the dots, put arrowheads on either side to graph my line, and there it is. I created a table of values and used it to graph a line. Um, so I'll just reiterate because people really, really struggle with this concept. First you just choose your x's. And again, you can make your life harder easy by choosing wisely. I chose things that would give me whole numbers instead of fractions. And then after you're done with choosing your x values, you solve for your y's. And that was all that side work we did on the left. And then once you solve for those y's, what they give you is points. So you graph those points and connect them to make a line. None of the math is that hard. It involves a bunch of basic simple concepts like the algebraic concept of substitution and, um, gr you know, graphing points. And most students, even those who struggle with lines, don't struggle with points. So this is considered the easy way to graph a line, even though it's kind of the slow way. <laughs> Great. If you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I will do my very best to answer it.